Okay, um, let's start. Uh, just a little recap from um, last time we, we sort of introduced the current mirrors in the last lecture and we ended up on this uh, cascode current mirror. Um, we know so from, from cascode amplifiers that the R out is also kind of amplified by the, by the last transistor in the stack. Um, and then we kind of figured out what the biasing was. And the idea was to go uh, up by VTH uh, plus VOV and then, and then another time so that uh, this voltage here is 2 VTH plus 2 VOV, which gives us the minimum output voltage. Yeah. Okay, so the question is why, why the systematic gain error only depends on the bottom two transistors. Uh, the current that is shipping out is really set by M1. Right, so if you looked at cascode, kind of what we did, um, cascode amplifier, also the current is set kind of by whatever the bias is on the bottom transistor. And so, um, as long as you can guarantee that this voltage is matching this one, the current replication will be um, matched, right? Uh, yeah. Now, you will have some very small fluctuations by the, by the R out, uh, simply because this guy, um, if you're changing the, the output voltage, as we said, you're gonna have kind of the, still finite out output impedance. Um, it's not completely shielded from the VO uh, change. But to the first extent, the matching uh, is kind of preserved if the two VDSs are the same. Okay, so um, just to continue a little bit with this is that this was sort of the minimum output that we derived. Now, uh, it's kind of high because of this VTH factor that we had to add as we're climbing up the, st the stack of these two diode-connected transistors. So the idea would be how do we preserve some of the properties like high output impedance and um, this systematic gain error replication while uh, trying to eliminate this uh, VTH. So, if we go to the next. So the topic of this lecture is really looking at this um, low over, overhead uh, current sources, or current sources that will have at the output something that is proportional to a few VOVs, uh, or the overdrive voltages, rather than uh, anything that has to do with threshold voltage, because that will be a high overhead. So again, going back to um, the so we'll, we can label this as five, just so you track it. Um, so there are a few things we can do. So in our normal uh, CAS code, we had this situation over here where we had two diode connected transistors. And then over here, we had um, our CAS code output. And now the, the, trick, the trick is how to connect these two so that I get here VOV, and then here I can get uh, two VOV, and still preserve that this stays in saturation, right? So what kind of biasing um, do I need to do? What, what kind of voltages are first available on the left? What is, what is this, the potential of this node? Okay, and VGS in terms of this threshold plus overdrive volt, yeah. So this is um, VTH plus V overdrive. And then what is the voltage here? Yeah. 
So it's 2VTH plus 2VOV. Nothing changed with respect to what we had in the CAS code, right? But for me to get VOV here and 2VOV here, what voltages do I need to have on my, on my gates here? At least. Right, that's the point. Like what, what, what voltage can I have here? How do I use these guys to bias the right side? I think that's the point. Can I use 2VTH plus 2OV to bias this one? No, why not? If I put on this one 2VTH plus 2VOV and the output is at VOV, what is, the, what is the region or regime of operation of that transistor? Hmm? Can you speak up? Try it, yes. Because there's more than a threshold drop on VGD. Right, so, so gate is higher than the threshold from the, the drain source voltage, right? So we can't, obviously can't do this, right? So what can we do? What voltage can we put in? Okay, we can try to do this, right? And this is VTH plus VOV. That's actually the highest we can go, right? Because if you went a little bit further, then this VGD will be greater than VTH and we'll be pushing that transistor into triad, right? So, but this is fine. So this is, we're just at the edge. Now, okay, that's fine for the first one. I can now tolerate the VOV. What do I do with the next one? Can I put two VTH plus two VOV? That's the only available kind of bias. Can I put it over here? I see some heads shaking, saying no, right? Why not? So that also doesn't work, right? So, so my VGD will be 2VTH. What do I need to do in order to get it to be just right? What do I need to put here in order to be able to get here the voltage I want? Which voltage do I want here? Two VOV plus VTH, that's right. I want VTH here. Right. Okay. So um, what should I put here? So I have 2 VTH plus 2 OV and 2 V OV plus VTH on this side. What can I put in, in, in here to make things work? Hmm? A transistor, right. So I would say, let's say ideally, if I had ideal elements, I would put something like something that has VTH voltage drop, right? But obviously we, can, we don't have that. So we'll have to figure out a transistor that level shifts, right? So that takes this voltage and then level shifts. So did we do any, like when we looked at sort of the amplifier stages, do we know of any stage that kind of shifts the bias point um, from gate to source? Common drain or source follower, right? Yeah, so that's that's a great idea. So let's let's try to do it. I'm going to have this. And then now from here we're going to um, do exactly that. So we're going to add a stage that will downshift uh, the voltage, and then we're going to use this on 
the output. I'm going to connect this one over here. And then, or just better yet, um, in order to bias this guy, we'll also need to add one more transistor here. So we're mirroring this current from the left as a bias for this uh, source follower. And then we're mirroring it over here once more to bias our cost code output. Okay. So here is our I naught. And let's just label some of these transistors so we can analyze them. Um, M3, we're going to call this M4, M5, and M6. Okay. So let's take a look at what, what's happening now. What voltages do we have on these two nodes? These are just our standard CAS code, right? So VTH plus VOV, 2VTH plus 2VOV, right? Then we go and drop by the VGS, which is VTH plus VOV, right? So on this node here, we should have VTH plus VOV. Here we want to have VOV, that's fine. But notice now, given that this is VTH plus VOV, this guy, if it starts dropping, will get like zero VDS, right, across. Right, that will result in very low output current. Right, so that obviously is not the right thing to do. We need to change something. The topology is okay, but we need to change something to be able to lift this up a little bit. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little, little sizing exercise. Um, right now, I was assuming that all transistors have the same size. Therefore, they're all dropping VTH plus VOV. But if we have something like, um, um, you know, we're writing the equations, so, um, I is K prime over 2 W over L times V of E squared. Right, so if I have, let's call this WL1, if I have um, 2, how do I make this V of E be larger than this V of E1? Same current that passes through both. Yeah, so I can change the dimensions. So over here, what I want to do is I want to change the size of this transistor over here so that I can lift it up by another VOV. Okay? So instead of 2 VTH plus 2 VOV, I get 2 VTH plus 3 VOV. If that happens, so it, what, what this is really is VTH plus VOV6 plus VTH plus VOV5. And this VOV5 is actually 2 VOV. And VOV6 is really VOV, right? So I'm just going to assume that all the other transistors have some W over L except this M5. So I'm going to try to find what that M5 is relative to the, all the other transistors. So what this tells me is I need to double my overdrive voltage on M5 compared to all the other transistors. Right? So how do I do that? If I double the voltage here, what does the size have to be in order to compensate? One fourth, right? So I can say that W over L times VOV 
equals um, 1 quarter w over l times 2 v o v squared. Right. So this will be v o v 6, and this will be w over l 6. I'm oh, sorry, 5. OK, let's not confuse you. Okay, so if I do that, then I get my output to be VOV here and another um, another VOV here. So the output total is two VOV. Okay, um, so we can write that VO min equals two VOV. Um, What is V in? We're gonna, we can label V in again as V in. Mm -hmm. So we've paid a little bit of a price, right? Previously it was 2VTH plus 2VOV. Now we need to accommodate one more overdrive voltage. So that also will constrain because you know, this current source really is also something that is provided um, that is some other mirror or, or, or reference. So the higher I go on the V in, the tougher it is for that thing to, to give me any reasonable output, right? Uh, so this is also a concern. Uh, what is the systematic gain? Error. Again, let's just take a look at transistor that is a reference, right? That's M6. And then the one that really drives the, the current of the, of the cascode, right? which is M1. What is the difference in their drain voltages? Yeah. So it's lambda times VDS6 um, or Re refer to the output is VDS1 minus VDS6. And that is um, minus lambda VTH. Because VDS1 is only the overdrive, and VDS6 is VTH plus V overdrive. So there is this threshold voltage difference between drain source voltages that will cause the systematic gain error. Now, fortunately, that's not all, OK? Um, does anybody else see what else could be the problem? I've introduced all these source followers. What's the, what's the problem with source follower, usually? Gain is less than one, but they also have some, some other effect. Maybe if I draw it like this. Yeah. All right, so same, same, oops. Um, oh. Okay, I don't know what's going on. All right. So, so let's take a look at what's happening here. When we were coming up and down, we were assuming that VGS is our VTH plus VOV, right? So that is true when I ignore the body effect. But the VTH of M6 is not the same as VTH of M2 and M, M4, right? So if I look at, for example, this whole KVL, I essentially have um, VGS6 uh, plus VGS5 minus um, 
VGS4 minus VGS2. If there is any mismatch, so if this, if this total, uh, if this sum is not equal to zero, then I have gain error. Right, because there, um, I'm going up and up and then two times down. Right? Um, or let's say, sorry, let's say like this. As I'm going here, v, VGS5 and then down and down. Okay, so VGS5 is up by, its source is up by VTH plus VOV of M6. This M4, its source is down um, by, from two VTH plus three VOV, it's down by uh, VTH plus VOV, right? So this p potential is higher than this one, at least by VOV. Therefore, its, v, its VTH is going to be different, right? So I have difference in, um, so VTH4 is greater than VTH5. Okay, that's, that's the first um, issue. And then also, if you look at um, M2, then VTH2 is going to be greater than VTH6 because M2 has source potential at V overdrive, and M6 has source potential at ground. So as I'm looking through that loop, um, my threshold voltages are not exactly canceling out. Okay. And I will have that extra difference. So, so this potential hill is really not going to be at V of V, but at V of V minus some delta, which is the difference of these cumulative threshold voltages around the loop. Okay, so that's an additional, um, so body effect pushes. Um, down. Okay. okay. So what we can do in practice in order to balance this side, because the left side has smaller voltage accumulation really than what gets dropped on the right side, um, we're going to size W over L5 will be less than one quarter of WL6. Okay. So if we size it slightly less than one quarter, we're adding more than one VOV, right? So we're adding maybe you know, 1.2 V of V or 1.3. And that will compensate for the extra voltage, threshold voltage drops due to body effect on the other side. Okay, so this is something you sort of need to tweak in order to really get kind of a zero, uh, at least that effect eliminated. Okay. Um, so in order to completely, however, eliminate it, so let's say, want to eliminate uh, body effect, um, as well as potentially lower this V in. Um, we can go and split things up a little bit. So. We've already, if you look at the previous diagram, we've already introduced this, the third branch, right? So we're already pulling current I from this supply as well as this current. So if I just, instead of have a drain here, a um, common drain, if I introduce another mirror, I'm not adding really more power consumption because that's already pulling I. But I can effectively decrease this stack over here. So let's see how that works. So I can have one mirror and one diode connected device. Well, let's do it the other way around. And then I'll have another mirror. Just 
make it a little bit lower. And then from this one, if I keep this tr sizing trick that I did previously, so I'll call this M4, and I'll make it 1 quarter W over L, then my voltage here will be VTH plus 2 VOV, right? And voltage here, whereas this is W over L, will be VTH plus VOV. Note that VOV is with, with respect to the transistor that has full size, W over L. So if I shrink the size for same current, I will get essentially a double uh, overdrive. So now I, I still have my two voltages that I want to use in the CAS code. Um, I want VOV here and I want two VOV here. So I can use, I can take this voltage and bias this guy and with this voltage bias this guy. So in this case, my R out is also GM RO square because nothing really changed on that side. Um, did anything change with, with respect to the systematic gain error? What's the difference? So, so where, where am I, which of the, these two transistors is serving as a, as a current reference to replicate uh, to the output? The middle one. What's its drain source voltage? VOV. And the, re, the mirror is VOV. So what's the error? Okay, so basically nothing changed there. Um, and in terms of V in, now we have two, two branches where we can consider we have this V input, right? We have um, V in one here, and then we have V in two here. So we're really concerned about the maximum of these two, right? Because that one's going to set the limit uh, which of these two dry, uh, transistors gets enough of, um, voltage headroom. And this is VTH plus two V of E. So the nice thing is we've dropped by one VTH plus V of E, right? Okay. The other thing is if you look at this systematic gain error, we've, we still have VTH plus uh, something, right? It's not entirely just lambda VTH, but that something got significantly smaller, right? So what, it, what, what else do, do I have here as a term? Is the error in the drain just the VTH of this transistor, M4? Okay. 
I have essentially um, this has to be VDS1 minus VDS4. Um, or, um, sorry. Uh, no, VDS1. minus VDS3. This is M3. So VDS3 is equal to VTH plus VOV. And VDS1, how do I know it's VOV? So VDS1 is what, really? How do you calculate this voltage, VDS1? I want it to be VOV, but I, I don't know if it is VOV, right? It will be set by the gate source voltages. So I have to start from here. And then I go up by VTH plus VOV to VOV. And I go down by VTH2 plus, and then another VOV. Right. So now, I really have VTH minus VTH2 plus VOV. So if this is not zero, I have an extra error. Right. This is the body effect. And why is VTH different than VTH2? Well, because the source is not at ground. Right? So I have only one body effect, whereas in the previous one I had two transistors. I had M4, which was this level shifter, and then I had M2, which was the output. Right? We had M4 here and M2, and both VTHs had to be subtracted from these two. So this is still smaller than in the previous example that we had, right? So, uh, but, but it, it's still there. OK. So let's see what we can do about this lambda VTH, because we would like the error to we would like to keep this topology because it's a small V in, but we need to eliminate somehow the, 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 the gain error that got introduced. So, so let's take a look at the, oops, the schematic. So we're going to have our cast codes normally here. And then now we have to figure out how to change the diode connected transistor that was mirroring into the, uh, the bottom of the cast code stack. Because right. that one, if we just put that transistor, so this will be 1 quarter W over L. Nothing's changing there so that we can get the right biasing for the top transistor. But if we just kept the bottom one is diode connected, then um, we're still going to have this mismatch in that this VDS is VT, uh, VD, uh, VTH plus VOV, and this one is only VOV. So what I want is I want VOV here. So how do I get that VOV? Um, I need to put in some, again, some sort of a level shifter, right? Okay. So let me try to do that. So I'll put a level shifter. This voltage over here is um, 
VTH plus two VOV, right? That's what we used to connect. Okay, let's connect it somehow. We connected it here, right? So that the output can be two VOV. So if I have VOV here, and this transistor has VTH plus VOV, where can I connect the gate? Do I have in the circuit anywhere a potential that is VTH plus two VOV? Huh? Okay. I see some people smiling, so I think they recognize that we can do this, right? Okay, and so what's left is also that I need to provide this voltage over here, which I would like it to be VTH plus VOV, simply because I then I'm providing the same I in, right? And my output is guaranteed to be at VOV. So where can I find this? So you're saying connect this one, this somewhere. Where do I connect it? Here. If I connect it over here, then I'm establishing. Uh, then I, then this voltage can no longer be VOV. Where can I connect it? Okay, so one idea is to connect it here. And I can do that, but there's a limitation. What is the limitation? I have certain conditions imposed on this level shifter, right? So let's say on one hand, it's V, VG, which is the gate, the gate potential is at VTH plus two VOV. The drain potential, so we are, we're talking about VGD, okay, let's call it M4. So this is M3, M4, M2, M1. So VGD4 is equal to VTH plus 2V, 2 VOV, and then minus the drain potential, which is VTH plus VOV. So this is VOV. What does VGD have to be in order to uh, keep this transistor in saturation? has to be smaller than VTH, right? I can't have VGD be larger than VTH because then that transistor is going to be in triad. So because we know that VOV is 2 times I over K prime W over L, this will kind of set what I in I can tolerate here, right? So if I'm doing certain type of circuit, I need to tailor this VOV or the, the input current coupled with the size of the receive uh, transistor, which is M3, in order to satisfy this condition. So, so things are nice here. I have all the benefits that I wanted, but, but I need to be aware of this extra condition. OK. So in this case, oops.
what is the systematic gainer? It's the VDS of this guy minus the V, or, or this guy minus the VDS of M3. Zero, right? Because I have a VOV guaranteed on both sides. And also by the level shifters M4 and M2, which both suffer from the same body effect, right? So life looks good. Um, what is V in? And then I can call this So again, it's max of V in one, V in two, and that's VTH plus two VOV. R out again is same. So nothing really changed there. So the only thing we have potentially is that we, we gotta control these two currents uh, somewhat. Notice that really what you're replicating is I in to the output, but Slight errors will occur in the mismatch or in the systematic gain if this guy is really not developing VOV, right? So if, if this I in is slightly different, right? Okay. But it's not a direct error effect. It has to map through the short channel lambda effect. It's not a, a direct error in, in a multiplier like we would have that if I in, if, um, I in was somehow mismatched. So in order to, in all these things that we showed, um, we had these two current sources. So 2x the, the supply, uh, the power that needs to be thrown from the supply. So in order to combine them, we're going to look at one device that's called a triode device. Um, And some of you who looked at homework have already maybe seen this device. Um, all right, so M1 is here, M2 is here. The goal I want to do is obviously to produce something that is a voltage of VOV over here. Because if I'm just using diode connected devices, I can only produce VTH plus VOV. So I don't have the control or biasing granularity that I want if I want to generate a smaller voltage that I then reference around, right? So this is going to be very handy for me to use as, as a biasing in the circuit. So um, if this is VOV, what voltage um, is actually here at the, at the gate of, uh, of M1. I want to keep, I want conditions where M2 is in saturation. And as a consequence of that, and this requ VOV requirement, uh, M1 will be in triode. So I have VOV here, and I'm requesting that M2 is in saturation. So what is M2's VGS? Yeah, it's uh, VTH plus VOV, right? So then this voltage is what? Well, we have this VOV as well, right? So it's VTH plus 2 VOV. Okay, now we're getting to sort of the familiar voltages that we used, right, in the previous one. We used, we exactly kind of had these kinds of biases that we needed for the CAS code. So um, what I can say from here is that VGD1 um, is equal to 
VGS2. And that's um, essentially equal to VTH plus um, V overdrive. If I look at the current, the first equation I have will be uh, for M2 and will be VGS2 minus VTH square. That will also be the same current for M1, but M1 um, is not in saturation, so I have to write I have to write the triode equation for, for M1. So from this, if I desire VOV, then I know from this analysis that VGS1 uh, is VTH plus 2 VOV. And I can plug this back in here. And then I know that VGS2 is VTH plus VOV. So let me re when we rearrange this um, and we cancel the case, we get the WL2 times VOV um, square equals W over L1 times 2 times, and then this will be 2 VOV times VDS1 will be VOV, and then minus VOV squared. So everything is now a function of V of V. And this is 3 V of V squared. So what this is, means is that W over L2 will be equal to 3 times W over L1. And if I say that this is some W over L, uh, then W over L, L1 will be, have to be 3 times smaller than W, um, than M2, okay? So if you wanna go back um, to our circuit or, uh, that we had previously, we had um, the two branches and now here, instead of using, um, well, actually, let me skip this due to time. Well, okay, let me just draw it real quick. Um, So this is my standard cast code. And then I can use um, this over here. I'll use this voltage over here. Okay. So the main difference from the previous one is that I've just taken that one diode connected transistor that I had previously. This was one quarter W over L. And I've replaced it with a diode connected one that is W over L, and the bottom one, which is one third W over L, that's in triode. So, so I sort of source degenerated this diode connected transistor with this resistor over here that has a, just the right size. Okay. Now, if I sort of, uh, take one, this one step further, I already saw that I have here the voltages that I can use to kind of climb up over here. So I'll just draw um, the final thing, which is called such cascode. And so what I have here is my D1 
device. Nothing is changing here at the bottom. This is just a regular um, CAS code. And so just to take a look at this, um, this was VTH plus VOV. This is, I wanted this to be at VOV and have another VOV here. So that means that I want here VTH plus two VOV. I have here VTH plus VOV because that's just connected. And then we know that in this triode device, this potential was just one VOV bigger than this. So it was VTH plus two VOV. And this one was VTH plus two VOV. So then this one will be two VTH plus three VOV because it's, with respect to this one, it increased by VTH plus two VOV. Okay, so what's the only thing I need now? I need somehow to connect this to some voltage that is developed over here. Which voltage? Do we have it anywhere? Yeah. Yeah, so you're saying here, right? Okay. That's it. So now we've combined everything into one branch. Um, the systematic gain error is the same as previously. Um, and the only price we've paid is what? Well, okay, that you'll usually have that in circuits that you'll, you'll use transistors to solve problems and lo lower the power dissipation, right? So here we've lowered the power uh, because we only have one branch. We also eliminated the mismatch issue between the two current sources, right? But we paid some price. Yeah, VN is now larger. Right. It is now two VTH plus three VOV. Okay. And you can imagine if VTH is half a volt and you have another couple hundred millivolts that you want for VOV, this is already kind of accumulated to like 1.5, 1.6 volts, right? So even a two volt supply over here um, will be problematic because you would leave only like half a volt uh, for for the source, right? And we already know that you know good sources will have about two VOV, um, which is another sort of half a volt or 0 0.3, 0 0.4, right? So so that is a little bit of a problem in sort of scaled processes. So then you kind of have to go back to this trade-off. If you have very low voltage, you have to have more power by doing these two branches. But if you have enough voltage, you sort of do this trick. Okay. So we'll, we'll cover, I think the rest is just we have a Viddler source and uh, a few practical issues. We'll cover that next time. But I think you, you have. About this trial device, Ron? OK. Um, sure. I mean, par part about 